Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner and today I'm privileged to be joined by notorious filmmaker and first time novelist Adam Simcox. How are you mate? I'm great thanks Andrew, how are you? I'm very well thanks, very well indeed. It's great to have you on and um, uh, before we start talking about your new novel The Dying Squad which you can buy in hardcover from Forbidden Planet at the links attached to this interview. Could you just talk me through your very interesting career up to this point? Yeah, sure. I mean, before this, I've, I've been working in film. So I, I wrote and produced and directed uh, three kind of micro budget films. Um, the first one was kind of superhero in, in origin. It's called, it was called literally it's the called superhero. It's called the superhero, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. It took me ages to think of that one. <laughs> and it's it was kind of set, it's set in Manchester and it was a sort of a gritty... Uh, low budget British take mixture of live action and animation and that one kind of we managed to sell that to Netflix but that was before Netflix was Netflix so I had no concept of what Netflix was like this is like 12 years ago so you know if you've got a good dog video they'd probably take it at the point that they bought the superhero but it, it was a great it was like a lot of the people that worked on that film have gone on to kind of win BAFTAs and had very successful careers and then I, I did two more low budget films after that, which kind of did well around festivals around the world and finally needed to make some money. So I started making music videos and then kind of moved into more corporate work as well, more commercial kind of work. Um, all of which was great because it kind of gave me so much time to write. You know, it's not really a nine to five gig filmmaking. Um, and so I, I started writing. I had this idea for this uh, I did this documentary about this guy who wanted to go to Mars. There was this one man mission to Mars, well, one way trip to Mars. I thought, man, that'd be a make a great film, but there's no way I can, I can make that as a low budget film. So I wrote it. I wrote a, a novel based on it and kind of worked with an agent for a little bit, didn't go anywhere. And so I wrote, and then I wrote another couple of novels before kind of hitting it, hitting the mark with a dying squad. Brilliant, mate. I, I mean, it, and it's such an interesting way to uh, to get into being to ease into being a writer. I think in a kind of like parallel artistic endeavor like film, which re which relies so heavily on writing and has such a you know century long history of not crediting writers properly. So <laughs> that whole that whole arc of, of what you did also, mate. There should be more northern based superhero films. That in my just view. There are, there are a dearth of them. There are a dearth yeah, of them. There are, yeah, the, the Northwestern superhero genre is pretty <laughs> much an army of one in your it, mate. It is, absolutely. That's, I'm not sure I'm the best guy to be flying that flag, but I'm very glad to be flying it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, your, your debut novel, The Dying Squad, which is the first in the series, right, mate? Mm, it is. It, I'm, I'm currently writing the third at the moment, actually. So, yes, yeah, first in the series. Oh, brilliant. And uh, it's such a great concept. Um, what can you tell us about it? Well, the Dying Squad is about a police detective who has to solve his own murder. So this is the start of the book. Joe Lazarus uh, storms a Lincolnshire farmhouse, hoping to bring down the drugs gang within it. But he's Brilliant name, by the way. I, I, feel, <laughs> I feel the clue of where you're going with his story arc it might be in his name. It is it's an unsubtle, unsubtle <laughs> win, to be honest. But it's a fantastic hero name, mate. It's brilliant. Cheers. Uh, anyway, so he storms his farmhouse, he finds his own bleeding out body and a spirit guy called Daisy May, who's there to recruit him to the Dying Squad. And the Dying Squad are a spectral police force who solve crimes that their flesh and blood police can't. Um, so Joe reluctantly agrees to join the squad uh, and he has to find and face uh, kind of threats from both the living and the dead uh, of hopefully to find his killer before they kill again. I love it, mate. And and um, how long had those characters, how, how long had Joe Lazarus, the concept of who he is, how long had that lived with you, you know, before you created the series? It, it was a weird one. This is the first time it's ever happened. But I honestly, I dreamt the start. I dreamt the whole opening chapter, dreamt Joe, uh, Daisy May, who's his partner. Um, and just kind of, I wrote it down, but I didn't, I was working on something else at the time, so I left it left it for a few months to let it simmer and then it kind of came from there so I felt it was almost gift wrapped to be honest the premise of it 
yeah right so so i i it, it must be it must be a great feeling when that i mean i've heard of that happening you know with with, with authors and whatnot and uh, uh but it must be an it must be an amazing thing if you're in the middle of a process like that and it kind of it comes to you in a dream like that what an amazing experience to have yeah it's quite it's quite lucky like i don't think it happens that often to be honest um and like what's interesting is like what grows from that so all the kind of the purgatory side of Dying Squad, because they're, they're kind of based in purgatory, called the, which is called the pen. All that sort of world, like I didn't imagine that in the truth. That kind of grew from it. So it's like, it's, you have this little seed and then like, it's amazing the way these things can, can go in different directions. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and in the process of making the world of the Dying Squad your own and making these very vibrant characters your own, um, did you, is there, are there things that inspired you along the way that are in this genre or are adjacent to this genre? Oh, definitely. I mean, Line of Duty was one that I kind of used a lot in the blurb, which is true, but also like the American show, The Shield. Oh man, like I, I love that. I lo what, and you're, you, you're managing to like cut a very kind of physical arc somewhere between the creator of the shield and the star of the shield. If you sat you next <laughs> to those guys, you know, your DNA is not dissimilar, mate. I tell you what, like I, I do get that one a bit. I also, but it's better than Phil Mitchell, which I also, oh, yeah. so I'll take Vic from the shield over Phil Mitchell. Mate, I, I used to have my haircut shorter and I was unshaven and often got the Phil Mitchell as well. And it's it's never pleasant <laughs> when it happens. It's, it's never a compliment. It's yeah, it's, a compliment. it is never a compliment, mate. That's absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so The Shield was like a, a real kind of uh, reference point. Um, also, like, this is England. Like, I love Shane Meadows stuff. Oh, mate, me too. Dead um, Man's so Shoes, was, right? Yeah, Dead Man's Shoes, absolutely fantastic. Um, and like a, a lot of the, the tone, the tone of his work was something I wanted to get across and also kind of the humour, because hopefully there is humour in the book too. It's often quite dark humour, quite black humour, but I really want to get that embedded in it as well. Wonderful. Uh, and um, and it, so can you, are you at the point where you can share the title of the second book or you've got to keep that under wraps? I've got to keep it under wraps. It's a bit, um, it's a bit, it's a bit under wraps, but I can I, very vaguely it's it's not just set so this is set uh, the dying squad is set in Lincolnshire rural Lincolnshire uh the second book is set in Manchester and also Tokyo oh amazing so it's a, li yeah. a little bit more international the, that's the a Manchester book. of Japan absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah that, so that's all all I can say at the moment really unfortunately that's fantastic mate I mean it, it's very exciting to talk to you and be in at the ground of you at the ground level of you starting this universe and I, I presume it, you know if if the the audience response is is where I think it's going to be you you're going to be able to roll and roll with these characters I hope so I mean I've, I've got I know what happens in the first three books yeah and I, I kind of know what would happen in a fourth book but like what what's important to me in it is to kind of almost reboot it every book so to keep it fresh like it would be really easy to make every book like joe and daisy may and there's a crime and they have to solve it so each book i'm trying to do it has obviously that basis but i'm trying to do something a little bit different stylistically with each one um the second one for instance like the first one was influenced by like the shield and shane meadows work the second one like a big influence on it is seven and heat yeah. Um, Brilliant. which are like really good touchstones for it. So I, I try and bring a little bit of a different energy to each one. Yeah. I I, I mean, as touchstones go, that you've 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 named some of my favorites. And to flip back to the shield for a second, what, what's great about that, of course, is the the unexpected nature of that show. I mean, that there was there was no roof on that show. They would just they would completely confound your expectations, even when you thought they couldn't confound your expectations anymore. They were constantly turning the dial up to eleven and taking it to places where you thought they're just not going to do that, you know. And then oh my god, they, they've actually done it, and they're rubbing your faces right in it. Absolutely, and it was and it delivered on the end. I mean, it's oh, so man. hard yeah, I agree. end shows like that, and that yeah. was certainly before Breaking Bad. That was mine. My top yeah. heavy show. The I high watermark. Before, yeah, I, absolutely right. I, 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 I can remember years ago, 
uh, driving around the States with a mate of mine. It was when the show began, The Shield, and there's a bunch of radio ads with the usual kind of basso forte voice, you know, it's The Shield. But <laughs> we were like, man, this sounds like such a load of fucking horseshit. You know, I, 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 The Shield, come on. You know, and then then we watched the first episode while we were out there and I was absolutely consumed by it. You know, evangelical about it for the rest of absolutely. its run. Yeah, it, it, was, it really set the tone because it kind of told you right from the start that like, all bets are off. And like, and then it get the murky. I mean, something I tried to bring through in the dying squad as well is like the murky and murky it gets. You still want to have a little bit of sympathy for each of the characters. Um, that's the kind of trick, keeping that balance between, yeah, dark and likable. I, I think in the dark um, Frankenstein-esque laboratory of your brain, I think you've managed to create the perfect Forbidden Planet novel, because you've taken the antecedents of the shield and the hardcore, the hardcore on the street crime, which I love. Yeah. And then, you know, the, the dark, supernatural, afterlife brilliance of some of the darker comic books that have been out there for the last 20 years, kind of jam those together. And, and it just sounds so exciting, mate. Oh, well, thank you so much. That's lovely to say. I mean, like, you know, Forbidden Planet is something that's been in my life in various forms for a long time so like the thought of forbidden planet stocking my book which is here i just got it through brilliant yesterday. it might be brilliant. back from yes um but yeah it's like it's a massive deal massive deal Oh, thanks, mate. Well, we're 110 percent behind it, and I know from my chats with my old mate Will at Glance slash Orion, who was the guy who suggested we should have a chat actually, um, because uh, he knew we were stocking the book. Um, he, he he said that we we got on. And I'm glad that he was right. And it, can you just hold the book up for one second again? Mate? Of course, I can. Of course, I can. So yeah, for those of you watching at home, this is the very book that you can order from the links attached to this conversation. And it is epic stuff. I love the cover as well, mate. Do you yeah, they've done. They've done. You put that together. Yeah fantastic job yeah and like i couldn't have asked for more kind of like it's been a very collaborative process with them and um i couldn't have asked for cooler cover than that it's very yeah. very cool no it's wonderful it's re it's really lovely now outside the, the universe have, do you have an umbrella title for the series by the way not really yet actually no we don't have an umbrella title yet i mean i guess it will be kind of the dying squad but each each book will be will be a lot of different kind of main title yeah it's because sometimes once you get into these series you know series yeah. titles present themselves you know sometimes because people then start colloquially using the names of the two lead characters as the umbrella. Yeah. yeah you know i mean some but it's interesting i think sometimes authors have it fully formed it's like this is what the series is going to be and that's particularly i, I noticed the case with a lot of these people who d do world construction in the science fiction um mm channel you know so people who build the world they often have umbrella titles but you know because they're off they often approach it they build the universe first then they drop the characters in but yeah i think i think you know it, it feels to me from your conversation that you're very much focusing on the characters you've got within the world you've created and, and i think you get much more dramatic resonance that way yeah and i'm I'll be honest i'm not I'm, my mates often tell me i'm a bit shit when it comes to titles like the Dying Squad was kind of up for up for grabs. Like I wasn't wedded to the Dying Squad. Um, but in the second one, I, I don't like the title I've got for the second book. That's why I've not said it yet because I, I think it gets me uh, Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, like I'm not wedded to titles. Some things, some things I will die in the sand for. Like there's, there's a line I won't cross. Titles, I'm a little bit more, you know, I'm I'm, I'm willing to work with money. Yeah. And Adam, have you got any? Uh, have you got any more film projects that you're working on? I've got, have you I kind mean, of closed the door on that? And... No, I, have, I haven't closed the door on it. I mean, to be honest, like the commercial stuff has, has slowed down quite a lot over the last 18 months because of road, like so many film professionals I know have kind of slowed it down. But um, I've got a music video coming up. I've not done a music video for ages. Uh, a guy called Harrison Whitford, a really talented guy. And he's actually um, his guitarist in Phoebe Bridges' band. Oh, brilliant, mate. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, and... And he's got he's got a solo album coming out, so I'm going to be doing something with him. Not exactly sure what yet, but the songs the songs really really great. And that's on Screwdriver Records. So yeah, I'm going to that's that's my next one. That's my next big project coming up. Oh, wonderful! Uh, that that sounds amazing as well. I mean, certainly uh, uh, Phoebe Bridges Band have done like great work, so that's got to be exciting working. Absolutely, working yeah. I think they've got like a big big tour coming soon, like next year. Fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, and like I say, he's going to be he's going to be touring the record as well. So yeah, it's really exciting. So Adam, before we go, in a, in an ideal world, 
um mm. where where do you where do you where would you love to where would you love the reception of this book to go what, what would what would be the what would be the perfect reception for you well i love i love people to love it i love yeah. people to to kind of connect with the characters connect with the story i was reading this book uh like mick herons i don't know if you've read his books but like um slough house series i love those books love them like it's a highlight of my year whenever I get those books. And I kind of pleasure delayed this latest one. And I was sitting down to write it. As I sit down to read it, just as I was sitting down to write, start writing the third book. I think if I could get to the point where someone is anticipating one of these Dying Squad books, as much as I anticipate one of Mick Heron's books, I've got it cracked. Like that yeah. would be a, a special thing. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm, sure, I'm sure you'll get there as well, because again, because your publishing partners uh, can answer to Ryan. I'm just so excited! I'm absolutely mm -hmm. certain you'll get there, and uh, and, and uh, it's it's just such a wonderful. The concept is such a wonderful confluence of things that are really tapping the finger on the zeitgeist right now. So uh, I'm with you, by the way, on that sense of anticipation. It's like whenever I read a new like Lawrence Block book, it's like man, I I literally can't wait to open this up. So that, I, 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 as an author, to sit on the other side of that, I bet that's hugely gratifying. And also, given your pedigree in um, in film, what about uh, adaptations into other media? I mean, I, I obviously would love to see it made into a film. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be like like crazy about directing it to be honest and um, it wouldn't be one that kind of massively appealed to me but I'm, I'm working on something at the moment um another book uh that would kill to direct, oh, <laughs> kill to direct it. It, in the back of my head i always had it as the next film i would make yeah but it was too it was too kind of big budget -y, but yeah I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind a crack at that uh but yeah, I would, I would love to see, I would be lying to say that it wouldn't be a massive, massive deal if one of these books was made into a film. It would be a huge ambition realised. Yeah, mate, I, I, I feel certain that you're going to get there. And I also feel certain that I'm very pleased that you came and joined me on the show today. It's really been wonderful chatting with you. And um, once again, it's been my pleasure to talk with Adam Simcox about his all new book, Out Now from Orion. The Dying Squad, which you can order from the links right at the bottom here. And, uh, mate, it's not a pleasure not just to meet uh, the creator of The Dying Squad, but the creator of the Northwest Premier Superhero as well. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Andrew. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, wonderful Have to meet time. you, mate. You take care. You too. All take the best. Bye-bye. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators. Subscribe right here. See you soon.